Morning. Another day, another rare world test. Today, we're doing it on the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, which might look very similar to the Surface Laptop 3, but there are some big changes, actually, which we'll talk about a bit later. Now, if you're not familiar, a real world test, I'm gonna go through my normal day using this laptop. We'll check in on the battery throughout that day. We'll check in on the performance. We'll talk about some of the features I like and don't like, all while we kind of explore a new hood. But, first things first. Today we're filming in the meatpacking district here in New York. Now, it gets the name from the fact that it was actually a place where all of the butchers and the slaughterhouses and the meatpacking industry was. And at one point in 1900, there were 250 slaughterhouses in this tiny, tiny area. Fast forward to now though, and there actually are five meatpacking companies that still operate in the district. But for the most part, it's been very much converted to a totally different type of hood. There are boutique places and tons of different like shopping as well as bars. Some of the most popular nightclubs here in New York City are also in this little neighborhood. It's also the neighborhood where Samsung has their flagship store called 837. Because that's the address, it's 837 Washington Street. And this is the coffee shop that I would always come to before said events. They do good espresso and they also have like babka, which is like this like chocolate Russian type of bread. It's very good. But while we're here, let's talk about the styling of this laptop. Now, honestly, this is my favorite Surface design-wise. Like, I love the Surface Book. I've used that before, but I rarely actually disconnect that to like use it as a tablet, um, as opposed to just using it normally as a clamshell. The only reason I usually gravitate towards the Surface Book is because it has a lot more power, generally, than the Surface Laptop lineup. But really, if I'm honest, this is the form factor I really want. And I've said it before, what Microsoft has been able to do with the entire Surface lineup is actually pretty impressive design-wise, right? Like, have you seen the Surface Studio, like Hinge? That's, like, come on, that's amazing. It obviously speaks to me and my, like, aesthetic. It's super minimalistic, which I really appreciate. And also, when you kind of go through a Surface device, you notice that there is actually a lot of attention to detail, which I also appreciate. The laptop has its standard aluminum casing, which I really like. And feels very premium to me. We have a few colors for the 13.5 inch model. We have sandstone, platinum, which is silver, and matte black. But we also have a new color called ice blue. And it comes with two different types of materials on the palm rest itself, which is Alcantara, which we're used to seeing now, and also just metal. Now for the 15 inch, they only come in two colors, black and platinum silver. And there is no choice of Alcantara. It's only gonna be metal. Now I have the 15 inch model, so I have the metal palm rest. I've used the Alcantara ones before though. A lot of people complain that they you know, start to get gross after a certain amount of time. I've never experienced that, but you know, look at other reviews and see what other people have said. But the metal, I do like regardless. And since I'm trying to get more power out of the laptop, I had to go for the 15 inch anyway. So Alcantara wasn't even a choice. Now, as far as weight is concerned, the 15 inch model is 3.4 pounds and the 13.5 inch model is 2.8 pounds. The meatpacking industry is actually really popular with photographers and filmmakers because of the kind of quaint little streets that they have here, which are not cobblestones, as we learned in my last video. They're called set or Belgian blocks. Either way, they're, they're, they make for good photos and they look nice on camera. Now, speaking of, there seems to be some sort of like fashion shoot happening as we speak, which is probably a good segue to talk about today's sponsor, Thread. Now, Thread is a website that after you answer a few simple questions, helps you find clothes personalized to your style, size, and budget from a ton of well-known clothing brands. After you sign up, you'll receive tips and outfit ideas tailored to you, and even have your own professional stylist assigned to you to give you more ideas and answer any questions that you might have. And if you don't like anything or need different sizes, etc., you have up to 100 days to return anything with return shipping paid and no questions asked. Now, as someone who would love to dress better but has no idea where to start, Thread has been super helpful in holding my hand and making it easier than I thought to find outfits that I really like. 
Right now, there's a discount of up to $30 for all new U.S. orders, as well as up to 20% off any order over 75 pounds for anyone in the U.K. Additionally, Thread is going to choose six people who sign up through my link in the description below at random to each receive $100 in-store credit. Go check it out, and thanks again to Thread for sponsoring this video. And this is the High Line. Now in the mid 1800s in this area, there were street level tracks for all of these freight trains that were bringing old things from, uh, from the industries that were down here to other parts of New York. And this avenue where they would run ended up getting the nickname of Death Avenue. And that was because it was quite dangerous because pedestrians would just kind of walk across these tracks and, and get hurt all the time. Now in the 1920s, the railroads actually hired a bunch of men on horses to block people using flags um, as the trains were going by. And they were actually ended up getting the nickname of the West Side Cowboys. Eventually in the 1930s, they realized there was a better way to do this. And they actually started creating and finished an elevated railroad uh, along this highway. Now the use of that railroad obviously declined as these things do, as the industries changed here, the meatpacking industry, uh, for example, being one of those. While a lot of people wanted to demolish this elevated railroad track, a lot of people realized, you know what? Maybe we could turn it into something better. And then some of the people started coming up onto this high line, which was not used in a long time, and realized that there were wild plants all kind of growing on it. And that gave them the idea, why don't we turn it into a park? Now, since then, parts of this railroad have been converted um, in segments over time, and it's now a full 1.45 miles of park, essentially, with over 500 different species of plant on it. And they also do all these interesting like art exhibits and you can find sculptures and things that kind of, and paintings as well, that just kind of rotate continuously. It's a lovely little way to kind of utilize the history that was here instead of just tearing it down and trying to build something else. While we're here though, let's talk a little bit more about the hardware of this laptop. Starting with the screen, um, it is almost bright enough for me to see it in, well, in this cloudy kind of overcast day, but just barely. I kind of wish that the screen was a little bit brighter because if it was brighter out here, I probably wouldn't be able to see it very well. And the more I use Surface devices, the more I start to realize how much I like their kind of more unique aspect ratio of three by two. What that means is you actually get a lot more vertical space than you would normally with a 16 by nine screen. And for me, I realized that that does actually help if I'm viewing say web pages and I want two of them side by side or a document I'm writing in and you know notes on the other side, etc. anything that is like obviously more vertical type content, it actually makes it pretty useful. Also that screen is a touch screen, which it's not really necessary to me, but it comes as that as standard. All of the models have that. So you kind of can think of it at least like a, a, maybe think of it as like a free bonus. Sure. And also like most Surface devices, that screen supports the Surface Pen. I'm using the Surface Slim Pen here, which I used with my Surface Duo that uh, I did a video on a while ago but it is of course sold separately. Then moving on to the keyboard, I really like typing on it. I don't really understand why, because it's not the most clicky keyboard. It's almost kind of cushiony soft, but there's something about that that kinetically is really pleasing. I don't know, I, they just did a good job. I, I appreciate typing on it. Also, the trackpad is another thing they did really well. It's large, it's very smooth, um, and actually, I, if I'm honest, it's probably the best trackpad that I've ever used on a Windows device. Now for ports, we have one USB-C port. Of course, personally, I wish that there were more of those on there. Also, it is not Thunderbolt capable. And we also have an old school, if it's safe to call it that, maybe not yet, but soon, I hope, uh, USB-A port. Of course, as is Microsoft's kind of MO, um, they need to be backwards compatible for as long as possible. They just have a lot of corporate customers that have old peripherals or, or running old software, for example, etc. And so the USB-A port, it makes sense for now. And lastly, we have the Surface port, as it's called, um, which I kind of think is dumb, but it's, it's their proprietary kind of charging port. They also do use it for their proprietary Surface docks. And I'm assuming that that's why they keep putting it on things because they want people that have those docks to still be able to use them, obviously. Okay.
Thank you, man. Okay, we had to stop real quick because along the High Line, there's actually a place called Chelsea Market. And technically it's not in the meatpacking district, it's in Chelsea, but it's like on the border. And there's just my favorite taco in New York City here. And I have not been here since before COVID. So I had to. It's super strange how empty this place is now inside. Like it's usually packed, but obviously COVID. Um, but they built all of these really cool outdoor spots now. So now it's just kind of become a outdoor market almost. Okay, and now we're at a place called City Winery. Now they have locations all over the US, but this um, one actually opened during COVID. And I've always kind of known that they did food and they obviously did wine. And they're actually quite known as a music venue because one of the owners of this place actually started the Knitting Factory, which is a super famous place. It's actually close to my house in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Um, and so that's kind of carried over into this place as well. But not only that, I just learned today that you can actually join the barrel club and have your own barrel of wine made here for you to come drink whenever you want. And now, well now I kind of want to do that. Now regardless, while we're here, let's talk about the performance of our laptop. You have a lot of choices with the Surface Laptop 4. You have the aforementioned sizes and colors, but also the choice of an Intel i5 or i7 or AMD Ryzen 5 for the 13.5 inch and either an i7 or Ryzen 7 for the 15 inch. Something interesting though, is the fact that the AMD models have Surface Edition processors, which means that Microsoft and AMD co-engineered them together. The idea behind that is to optimize battery life, performance, etc. It's actually something that both companies do on their Azure cloud products, their servers, and even Xbox systems. So it just kind of makes sense. I already did a video on Intel's new XE graphics, um, which I'll leave a link here uh, because it did impress me. But I asked Microsoft to send me the top AMD model so that I could check that out. And that's what we're using today. Now I've seen people complain that this is technically an older generation of AMD's processors, and that is true. But it makes sense if they've been co-engineering it during the creation of the Surface laptop, that that's what it would probably launch with, as it just takes time to do that. And using this laptop, I managed to finally be able to do something that I could never do with a Surface laptop up until this generation. I edited the entire last video that I put up on YouTube on this computer. And that blows my mind, honestly. I shoot in 4K 10-bit color from my Sony a7S III, and that has always choked on non-gaming computers. And yet on this, and I imagine probably also on the Intel models based on what I figured out with that Intel XZ video, again, you can check out, there I'll be able to do it. Now between that and what I've started to see with XE, I'm starting to, just starting to at least, have a bit more faith in integrated graphics, at least for my workflow and light gaming at least. Now it's not flawless. I do have to set it to a quarter resolution. And even if that, once I start to add all the color correction and layers, etc., it wasn't perfectly smooth playback. I was able to finish the entire video without moving to another computer, but personally, I'd like to see just a bit more breathing room before I'd switch to one of these with integrated graphics as my main editing machine. But that's something that at the beginning of 2021, I never even thought I'd say that. I will say though that this model has 16 gigs of RAM and that's the most you can get with an AMD processor. But there is a 32 gig RAM model that's Intel only and that might actually help a little bit. Now as for photo editing, Video is a lot harder for the system, and so, as expected, editing my normal, which isn't terribly hard workflow, was handled just fine as well. Hello. Work time. Okay, back in the apartment. And let's talk about battery life real quick. Now the 13 and a half inch model, all of a sudden now this year has 19 hours of battery life on the AMD model and 17 hours on the Intel model. Now with any OEM, these are in best case, perfect scenarios, essentially in a lab. So we never really expect to hit those numbers, but I did test it in a few different scenarios and here's how it did in those. Now, another site actually did a comparison 
with it in, in their like own battery test compared to the M1 Mac and found that it actually was only two hours less than the M1 Mac. And that's, you know, compared to last year's Surface Laptop 3 is a huge improvement. Honestly, overall, I mean, it has better battery life than the Model 4. It's able to edit my videos for the first time ever. And again, I wish it had like a little bit more power just to give me like a little bit of headroom. But also on top of that, it's actually a little cheaper technically for the same specs um, or at least more specs for less money than last year as well. So not bad. There you go. Let me know you guys think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated as well. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where it's subscribed so you can notify when I do new videos. Also, if you guys want to check out some other neighborhoods or places that I explored, um, also check out the rest of the Real World Test series. I'll leave a link below and above for that as well. Regardless though, thanks for watching.